want to talk a bit more today about the pelvis and how amazing it can be for during pregnancy and the amazing job it does during birth. Um, but today, what I specifically want to speak about is about babies who might be high in the pelvis, babies that aren't quite engaging in the pelvis. And the reason this is important is because it can have implications on the type of labour you may have. If you've heard of women saying that they had a 50-hour labour or they had contractions for the whole weekend or you know, for days on end, quite often it's your body trying to get your baby into a good position. And again, as we've talked about before in, within the pelvis, there's a few different dimensions that the baby needs to navigate through, like a lock and a key. Uh, and if there's some things we can do to help that process happen. But quite often, um, I've, I've known of women whose doctors have booked them in for cesareans because their baby hasn't engaged into the pelvis by, let's say, 38 or 39 weeks. Um, and the reason that this is the case, the reason that, that doctors like to induce babies that are high or not engaged is because there's a belief that they won't fit. If they can't fit into the brim, they won't fit through the pelvis at all, um, which is not always the case. Um, so what engagement is, if, if you're not familiar with it, is where the baby's head is in relation to the first um, dimension, the, the pelvic brim. So this section here, right at the top, I don't know if you can see that, it's quite circular. Um, and engagement is a statement of where the baby's head is in relation to that top dimension of the brim, the inlet. Um, if your baby is, in, is what we consider engaged, it means that there's more of the baby's head in the pelvic, uh, past the pelvic brim uh, rather than above it. Um, whereas a baby's head can be up above the pelvic brim. And this may be because of uh, something to do with the pelvic alignment, um, rarely because they won't fit. Uh, but most, most often because of the position that they're in. And as I said, this can often manifest in a labour that is, you know, quite sporadic or it won't quite establish or you might have days of intermittent labour or you may have one of those fabulous 50-hour, you know, 30-hour uh, labours with a very long first stage. And generally what that could be a cause of or, or could, could be a sign of is that your baby's not quite in the right position with the head nicely tucked in, uh, with the chin tucked. Um, as I showed you with my little baby last time, you want that diameter of the head that's the smallest, which is right at the back, you want that part to be coming in. And for that part to come in to the pelvis and be what's leading the baby, you're needing their chin to be nice and tucked in. So today I'm gonna to show you a technique that's used generally in, in an early labor situation. You're doing it during contractions and you are using the contractions to help shift that baby, tuck the chin, and tuck itself into the brim of the pelvis. Uh, it's best, again, to do it during a contraction, and it's great to do it for 10 contractions in a row. And I'm gonna show you how you can do it either on your own with a long piece of cloth, a rebozo. Um, this is just a, a long scarf, not quite long enough for my liking. Uh, you can also do it with interlaced fingers. So I'm gonna show you how to put the rebozo on. You're gonna miss my head here, but you're putting it across your tummy Make sure you get it halfway. Tuck it over your shoulder on one side. Tuck it on the other side. It's not quite long enough to stretch over my belly. My belly's not quite big enough yet. But what you're wanting to do is combine pulling on this scarf or the piece of fabric, which is encouraging your belly to tuck. And at the same time, you want to tilt your pelvis under. And that's creating that movement so during the contractions, you are pulling and holding and moving through those joints, through your pelvis, encouraging that pull and tuck. So you're lifting the abdomen, you're lifting your belly, and you're tucking your hips. You can also do it, or get, help, get your partner to help you. They can be behind you and just hold here and help you tuck. And every contraction they can help by going behind you and tucking um, their body behind you. You can also do it up against a wall uh, just to help, you know, sink low and around and getting that tucking action. So your pelvis is essentially going from quite upright like this to underneath and you're working on getting that baby into the pelvis. So if you're in early labour or if your labour's stop-start not quite happening or if your baby is high in the pelvis, 
Um, instead of rushing for a cesarean, there are a few things you can do to help your pelvis to accommodate the baby and to get baby into a better position. And the abdominal lift and tuck, um, tilting that pelvis really well through contractions in the early stage can make a big difference. So if you've had a, a try of it before or you've, um, if you've given it a go and it's been successful for you, it's quite a well-known technique. Um, yeah, let us know. Um, otherwise, yeah, happy birthing. <laughs>